Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. Today we're talking about everybody's favorite topic. We're talking about queries. Um, well, especially as especially as 2024 starts, I think our goal was to just talk about the querying process to make sure everybody gets it. Like I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about the query process. And I get why. I also think as agents are the ones setting the rules, it feels like our rules make no sense. And mm. our thought was start with a little bit about what the process is um, and then talk a little bit about the reasons for that and why you should follow the system. Yeah, uh, it's also New Year's resolution time. So I imagine hopefully we're getting a lot of new viewers, right. but viewers who have set a goal for themselves to maybe submit the book they wrote or start learning about publishing. So um, I think this is really valuable right now. I also find that end of December, January is when I see the most queries from people who clearly haven't done their research and, um, and, it's frustrating because I feel like, ah, oh, had they spent a little more time, you know, but, right. um, you know, hopefully they'll stick with it and be back. But so I think it's a good time for this conversation. Yeah. So just to start off, we've done a ton of videos on querying in general. So just to quickly give you the process, and then I'm going to push you off to one of our other videos. The author will finish their book, hopefully critique their book and make sure it's final. We have videos on that. The author will then write a query letter. Sometimes they will write a query letter while they're writing the book. They will get their query letter critique. That is your pitch for you in the book. We have videos on that. Definitely watch those. Then the author will do a list, a research on agents that they might want to work with. And then they will send that query letter and wait a little bit for some responses. If there's a request, they will send their full manuscript. So it's a lot like Jessica said this while we were preparing. It's a lot like an actor trying to get auditions. And we'll come back to that analogy a lot, I'm sure. Or somebody trying to get a job. Like, there's a process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's very. That's the process. And we have plenty of videos on the querying process if you want to know more. We're going to keep it pretty top level for this because we have lots of other things to talk about. But that is the standard flow, the standard procedure. There are two ways that queries are sent and received right now. It's email and query manager. Query manager is a website database that I would say has become the more of the norm than email probably you think i do think there's like over 600 agents on oh, Career manager probably yeah. at least at least with the hungrier agents i would say agents who are established and maybe not building a list are still using email do you think there's anybody still get, taking snail mail queries? i'm sure there's someone out there so i'm not gonna say no but so you can either send your letter via email to the website i mean to the email address listed on that agent's website or you will click the link that the agent has on their website that will open up their query manager form and you will paste your query bits and bobs in there. Um, bits and bobs. <laughs> for, um, reference, for reference, Bookends uses query manager and query manager alone. Nobody here accepts email queries and we haven't really since the start of query manager, it's been more than five years. And I will say most agents, I, again, I can't speak for everybody, but I would think most agents who are accepting via, via query manager usually don't do email. Who are accepting via email usually don't do query manager. Right. The reason for that and the reason for this whole process in general comes down, I think most plainly, it just comes down to ease and tracking and efficiency. I think yeah. our goal is for all queries to go to this one spot so that when we're ready to review them, we go to that one spot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, back when it was being done via snail mail or even via emails, queries, I mean, I remember some of it via email, but queries were getting lost all the time. Well, and even via snail mail, to be honest, I had a oh, spot. Sure. I had one bookshelf dedicated for all my query letters and all my submissions requested submissions that, that so I went to one spot. So it really hasn't changed that much. Yeah. But when we switched, well, first of all, snail mail is mail, right? U.S. Postal Service, we all know how much stuff gets lost there. Just yeah. was. But even in email, after a while, I found it so frustrating because if there were multiple communications, it would become an email chain and things would get lost or I would read the wrong thing or 
you know, the way email organizes itself, if the author followed up on something and I responded, now that email completely shifted out of order to a different yeah. spot in my chain. Spam filters. It became hard to find, hard to track. People's subjects were all over the place. It would just be query and title usually, which didn't tell me anything. So if I happened to be digging, looking for a mystery specifically, I couldn't tell what the mysteries were without, it took a lot more time. Yeah. Too. Like so, stuff got lost, but it took a lot more time for me to process them. Yeah. And then enter query manager. We were the first agency, I think on query manager, one of the <laughs> first agencies. And we've actually had Patrick McDonald, the creator of query manager on the channel, go find that video. He'll tell you all about query manager, how it came to be, how you can and use it. What, what nightmare purposes. clients we were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our Patrick, he had this great idea and he signed us up and we were like, can you do this and this and this and can we change this? Yeah, and can Patrick should this? have picked any other agency. <laughs> <laughs> but so definitely watch that video too. We're giving you a full playlist. Um, but Query Manager for Agents has made it all focalized on this website. But all of the things that Jessica is saying, it streamlined and it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It made more uniform. So every query on the left hand of our screen, title, author, genre, word count at a glance. So we can sort by that. Every query that is submitted, when you get that confirmation, it's not getting lost in spam filter. It's not getting lost at all, usually. Yeah. It's there. Your rejection is coming from Query Manager or your or your request. Let me not be negative. Your request, they're all coming from Query Manager directly. It has taken out all of the guesswork, all of, you can track your status. That's um, the biggest thing, I think. It gives authors more autonomy that they can actually check in and track without having to chase down people that they can just make sure you know we all have that feeling right did they respond and i missed it i need to check my email did it end up in my spam folder query manager helps you can just go on there and see that they have not yet responded and i think it just makes your life feel more controlled yeah exactly so all this to say this process is a process for a reason it is not i don't think any agent wants to make authors jump through hoops or do more work or like do this big process in order to get attention. It's not that it's, that's not our goal. Our goal is to be able to get you a response. Our goal is to be able to find books to work on. Our goal is also just to make money. And in order to do that, agents have had to set up a system and therefore, I mean, over the past 10 years, especially keep tweaking that system to make it as efficient and as streamlined as possible for you and us. Yeah. I recently had somebody email me a query and it wasn't even a query to be honest it was a i've written a book on this i'm super cool can we get on a phone call and i think everybody at bookends has an automatic response on email that is you know just generally saying we're not accepting email queries here's the link to my query manager please go there and do it and this author chose not to go to the query manager and instead came back at me at email and said i'm too big and fancy um, to jump through hoops and, you know, you should want to get on a call with me. And I, I did respond because I was in a mood, but I, I'm not asking anyone to jump through hoops. What I'm saying is that, you know, similar to when you apply for a job or when you audition to be in a movie or anything like that, there are a series of steps that I've created to help me manage the process, but to help me better evaluate. So, you know, query manager sorts things for me by genre. So like I said, if I'm very specifically looking for nonfiction today or mystery or suspense, because let's say every editor I've talked to this week is like, we are hungry for suspense. Our list is lacking suspense. I can go to query manager and sort by suspense. I can't do that in my email. Yeah. And I can, I can prioritize those queries. I can see the word count right away, but mostly things aren't getting lost. So I know when I'm responding, it's going back to the author. In fact, on my query manager, when you submit your query, I believe my response is something about make sure you, que you clear this email address from your spam filters so you can get any replies that will come from me. Um, you know, I can, it's easy for me on query manager to forward that query to somebody else at bookends. If I feel like, wow, there's a lot of value here, but I'm not the right agent but I know James is, I can simply forward it. I know it's not going to get lost in your email. I know that you're going to respond because it's now in your query manager queue. Um, yep. Or you can send it back to me and it's not this giant email chain. So 
it's not hoops we're asking you to jump through. It's that we're getting 500 of these a month each. Yeah. And we need a way to be able to make it easy for us. And the same goes in writing the query. I think a lot of authors feel like needing to write the pitch shouldn't be their job. Not a lot. Most of you probably don't. But let's face it, there are some who do. But the truth is you need to know how to sell your book. Anything you create and decide to sell as a business, you need to know how to sell. If you open a restaurant, you don't know how to tell people what you serve at your restaurant. How are you going to get people in the door? Yeah. And I also think, I, I don't know the best way to say this, but like this system is there. It works. It's been working. There are, I mean, most of my, maybe like 80, 90% of my clients I found through query manager, through the querying process, or maybe less now because of illustrators, but that's the way, like that's the normal procedure. Even authors who are being referred by my clients, even authors who are leaving an agent, maybe have 10 books under their belt, I'm still getting queries from them too. That's just the process. The same way when we're sending a book out, we're sending to, we're following the, the publisher's rules, right? Like we can't go to more than one imprint at this place and you have to do this many at Penguin Random House and you can't go to these two at the same time. That's just the way the industry works. Mm -hmm. And I do think there are a couple of things that will hurt an author and not hurt in the way it's like blacklisted. Hurt where like, you're maybe you're not getting considered the way you should or you're, maybe you are getting brushed off, but like ignoring that system entirely I think her too, like Jessica was saying, just pretending like, oh, you don't have to abide by that system. That, I think that hurts you. I don't think that makes a good impression, number one, but I also think you're not getting my full attention. Jessica wasn't able to review that query and read it and sit with it and say, oh, that would be a good fit for my list or that wouldn't be a good fit for my list because what she had to do was say, that, that, I can't, uh, no, <laughs> like I don't review this here. Well, the other thing too is that I don't want to work with somebody like this. I don't want to work with somebody who thinks they're bigger and fancier than everybody else on my list who has queried me through the proper channels. Because now when you have to jump through the same hoops that the publisher requires or that the system requires for me to submit your work to publishers or the publisher to sell to bookstores, how much are you going to fight us on a process that we know works and have been using? Um, that's just not some, it's, takes too much energy for me to work with somebody like that. Um, and it's not that I'm saying you need to follow the rules and do what I say. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying, though, that life has certain rules. And in the same way, I'm doing what the publisher needs and negotiating contracts in a certain way because I'm matching the publisher's expectations. We need to supply the materials that the publisher needs as well. You need to put the line the grocery store. Right. And I, I think the thing is, too, is that I get a lot of this time of year specifically queries that aren't queries so they're coming through query manager they're doing what they're supposed to do but they're not taking the effort to watch our other videos or read on our website what goes into a good query letter or what not that agent's looking a, for right not even writing a query letter like there's no blurb in there there's yeah. no nothing that's selling the book for me and then I, i'm not gonna go and read your pages just like when i go to the bookstore if there are books with zero cover copy, I'm not going to sift through that book when there are thousands of other books that I could just read the cover copy. Our job is not to read. And I think that's the biggest misconception. Yes. Our job is not to read. Our job right. is to sell books that can be sold. It's not right. to read. So your job as an author to help yourself stand out is to make your book saleable, make yourself saleable. Right, right. So I'm not going to piece through your material because you didn't bother to blurb me. And again, what it says to me is, I don't know, if you're not able to follow these first directions on business protocol, then how far is this gonna go where you're gonna fight me every step of the way? When I say I need the pitch to take to publishers, are you gonna fight me on that? Because- Also, everyone's favorite buzz phrase, how respectful can you be of boundaries? It's mm. a concern. Yeah. No, it's a very it's a very big concern because if you can't do it on our initial meeting, then certainly the more comfortable you get, I'm going to sense you're never going to do it. Yeah. Oh, I just went on a big tirade there. But anyway, there is and, and there are things I think what we sort of didn't expect to say in this video, but are saying is there are things we learn through this process about you and what it might 
be like to work with you that comes through in how you present yourself and your query. Um, and this is a totally random aside, but since it popped into my head, there's this other thing that authors do all the time that are immediate turnoffs to me. It's like dating, isn't it? Where um, they say, well, you probably won't read this anyway. Well, if you're coming in with a chip on your shoulder, then I probably won't read it because that seems like a lot of work. I do think like all of this, um, circumnavigating the system, even like emailing to ask permission to query, rushing through this process, at the end of the day, it, it's going to hurt the author more because you're mm -hmm. either, I don't want to say ruining, but like throwing away a chance, number one, yeah. or you're wasting your time. Because yeah. if you're getting that pass, you might wake up 30 queries down the road and be like, ah, oh, shit, I should have did that, right? I should have wrote a query. <laughs> and now I got to start, but now you got to start over, right? Mm -hmm. Because I doubt you're going to want to give up on that book if you realize, Mike, that wasn't a query. I didn't do it right. Now I have to do it over. So I feel like taking the time to understand the process and get on board with the process a little bit makes your life so much easier. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's as simple as that. But yeah. there is a method to all of this madness and there's a reason for it. And none of it, all of it is really to, we want to get you published. Yeah. But we, we also, but, you know, I mean, obviously you get published, then we have careers. We don't have careers if we're not getting authors published, but we need to be able to streamline our processes to make that happen. And there have been a lot of people in my years in publishing who have tried to eliminate the query process by creating websites where authors should be able to post to their website, this website, and then pay to post, of course. And then agents will go and review the materials. At the end of the day, the query process has stuck out and has not other than the way you query from snail mail to email to query manager, the query itself has not changed in a bajillion years of publishing. So it's working. Yeah, it's working. Your books keep coming out. They do. Thankfully. They do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> um, so we hope this was helpful. Like I said at the start, if you're new to this, if you're not new to this, Go watch all of our videos on the query process. Educate yourself as much as possible. Make your chances of standing out as best as they can be. And then query, I think you will thank us for that. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe. We post new videos every Wednesday and we'll have plenty of more to talk about. Bye. Bye.